Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 22. <clears throat> Continue with the law. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he, will, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. So one ox, you pay five oxen. You take a sheep, you pay four sheep. 2 Samuel 12, 6. 2 Samuel 12, 6. Second Samuel 12, 6. And we'll do verse 4. 2 Samuel 12, 4. There came a traveler unto the rich man. I think we know the story. This is Nathan speaking to David. And he spared to take his own flock of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb, theft, and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that has done this thing shall surely die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold. David knew the law. David knew what the law said about Bathsheba. If he can find this in chapter 22 of Exodus, fourfold for that lamb. You guarantee he knew about adultery and murder. That's back in 20. Thou shalt not. Well, he knew more than thou shalt. He knew the price. If a thief be found breaking up, we call it breaking an entry today. Look how our terminology comes out of the Bible. And be smitten that he died. All right? Let's bring it up to date. He comes through your window and you shoot him and he dies. There shall be no blood shed for him. There's no capital punishment. There's no jail. He had no business coming through the window of your house. He had no business coming into your house uninvited. And the subject is a thief. We'll see thief all the way down to verse 6, I believe. If the sun be risen upon him, it's morning. There shall be blood shed for him. For he shall make full restitution. If he has nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. Now run back to 21, verses 1, 2, and 3. That's one of the ways that a Hebrew can become a servant of a Hebrew. You were caught stealing. You can't pay the price. You're going to work it off. There's no prison. The guy will become as far as a chain gang. If he's caught stolen. Stealing. Alright. This is what you stole. This is what you're supposed to make. Oh, I ain't got that. I'm sorry. Alright, now you become that man's servant. Wouldn't that deter kind? Well, I don't want to work. Oh, I'll steal. You're going to end up working. Because you stole. 
if the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or sheep, he shall restore double. Well, there's, there's a quite a bit of penalty here for them. It's not just, okay, all right, here's a sheep and get with it. It's four sheep. It's double the sheep. It's going to cost you. And there's no jail. Notice there is no penitentiary in verse 22. There's been no penitentiary in verse 21. If a man shall cause a field or vineyard to be eaten. Now there's a law that says, you know, when you reap the harvest, you're not supposed to reap it completely. Be people like Ruth, the book of Ruth. You go in there and you get what's left over. When you bring mechanical things in and shake that tree completely today, you're violating the Bible. There are people starving. You want to make a profit. Here's somebody. Hey, that looks like a good field of wheat over there. And you get your cattle and you go, go on there and you feed your neighbor's yard. And he shall put in his beast and shall feed in another man's field. It's robbery. It's theft. Of the best of his own field and of the best of his own vineyard shall he make restitution. You call your animals to go steal from your neighbor or your family. It's not been harvest. Oh, children, uh, look at our neighbor. He's got such great apple trees. They're so good. You go over here and dine on it. Okay? When your harvest comes, and after you have tithed of the land to God at the temple, now you got to take the best that you have, and you are to return it to the person you stole of. How's that? If fire break out, this is Absalom. He purposely goes and burns down Joab's field. Samson does it to the Philistines. If fire break out and catch in thorns. Remember that pit that if you open up, you don't cover? Verse 21, you're responsible. Well, if you have a fire, fire break out and catch in thorns so that the stacks of corn or standing corn or the field be consumed therewith he that kindles the fire shall surely make restitution you're going to work that debt off you owe money better be careful with the fire you got going these laws have been laxed in america if a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep here i got something you keep this for me and it be stolen out of the man's house. If the thief be found, let him pay double. Listen, uh, I'm going away. Can you watch my dog? Or maybe it's a feral bird. Something like that. Someone steals that dog. And that thief be found with the dog. You now owe that guy's neighbor two dogs. Uh, he gives you a, a talent of gold. You now owe two talents of gold. If the thief be not found, then the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges. The owner of the house, that he's been taking part of his neighbor's goods. You go to the gate to see whether he has put his hand into his neighbor's goods. Did it really get lost or did you put your hand in it? And expression we have, did you get caught with your hand in the cookie jar? Another expression come out of the Bible. For all manner of trespass, that's when you cross the line. Whether it be for ox, for ass, for sheep, for raiment, or for any manner of lost thing, which another challenges to be his. The cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. So, in the Bible, why is every time I go say something, my brain forgets it? Um, what was it said? Losers, weepers. How was that said? 
Finders keepers lose your weepers. That's what it was. We used to grow if you found something that belonged to somebody, it's yours. The guy that lost it. That's not Bible doctrine. And if say somebody lost something and you grabbed it, and that guy comes up and say, Listen, I, I I lost this thing. You picked it up and you took it. Oh no, 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 no. That guy has a right to take you down to the judges. And those judges were usually Levites. And Levites were very close to God. They would reach out and say, God, we need an answer here. If a man deliver unto his neighbor an ass, or an ox, or sheep, or any beast to keep, and it be, or, and, and it die, or be hurt, or driven away, all right, so it drops dead, it got injured, or it ran away, no man seeth it. Then shall an oath of the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah, be between them both, that he has not put his hand into the neighbor's good, and the owner of it shall accept therein, and he shall not make it good. Listen, I, I let the animal go out, and when he came back, he had that scratch and blood. And listen, I cleaned it up. I, I took it to, I don't know what they call them, veterinarians, whatever. And the owner comes back and says, well, what happened here? And he explains to him, all right, between Jehovah and me, it was an accident. You did your best to reconcile. All right, I'll take my land back. Hang on. And if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. Right, can you watch this thing for me? It gets stolen. You're responsible. It's in your hands. Accountability, liability. Listen, if you don't want that response, we're going to come in a little bit more. If you don't want that response, hey, listen, I'm, I don't want to that, that's a big price item. If someone came to me with a diamond ring, let's say, like, and it's worth a fortune, can you walk? Uh, no, sorry. There is no way I can repay that if it were something were to happen to that. If it be torn in pieces, probably by animals, then let him bring it for a witness, and he shall not make good that which was torn. You know what Jacob said to Laban? Laban, some of your animals were taken by... She, I mean, by lions, by bears, and I took that animal and gave you another animal in exchange for what happened. I bared the loss of it. Jacob stepped out further than what the law. If any man borrow aught of his neighbor, you mean neighbor, can you let me borrow that chainsaw? I got to cut down some trees, and it be hurt, it breaks. Or die if you can't work it no more. The owner thereof being not with it, he shall surely make it good. You owe him a brand new chainsaw. Well, not a chainsaw used to what it is. She said brand new. But if you borrow your your neighbor's ox for whatever reason you borrow him for, and it dies, you owe him an ox. If it gets sick and dies, you owe him an ox. That's borrowing. You're liable. You're accountable. But if the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be a higher thing, it came for his hire. The owner of the chainsaw comes over and starts cutting down your tree for you. And it breaks. It's not the person's uh, accountability because the owner's with it. The owner was running it. If a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, she's single, and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Well, that would be a great rape prevention. You rape that woman, she's now your wife, and you got to hold to the laws of being a husband and the laws of her being your wife, which are strict.
Now watch this. If her father utterly refuses to give her on to him. I, I don't want her to marry. That. No, I don't want that relationship. No. He shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. And I don't know what that price is. Probably hefty. Salem, Massachusetts. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. I guarantee you that's probably where they got that from. But the Bible says you're to seek and make sure that if you're going to charge that woman or man as a witch, then you kill them. You don't let them live. How many people are running around America openly professing to be witches? And then you wonder why God is not blessing this country. How many people have taken, borrowed stuff from their neighbor and it broke and well, it, it's your problem? What about the thieves? Where are the thieves that have been caught in America? They're in a prison being paid by taxpayers. Whosoever lieth with a beast, bestiality, shall surely be put to death. How's that? Any, can you get any clearer than that? As I mark my Bible. And it's happening now, I find, in headlines more and more. There are people today, and it's not America, it's other places right now. They are marrying their dogs and cats in a union. And if they're going to marry their dogs and cats, can I tell you what's going to happen? Not tell you what's going to happen, but you know what happens after marriage. And the Bible is against that. He that sacrificed unto any God, save the Lord only, shall be utterly destroyed. So the Constitution of America says you can serve any God you want without penalty. Why is this country messed up? Why are we praying to God, one nation under God, that's on our money and nothing's happening? Because which God are you praying to? As I have always said, open up the yellow pages. People probably don't even know what that is anymore. But find the tab that says churches and then start counting. And get yourself a major metropolitan as Los Angeles, Chicago, or Dallas, something like that. Get their yellow pages, which it's like volumes. Someone told me one time LA's yellow pages are like six or seven volumes. And look how many churches are in there. For each of those churches, there's a different God. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger or oppress him. Why? For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Remember how it felt? Remember what it was like? Well, don't do it. Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. Now, in this case here, this family... There's hardly any income coming in. The father has died. He's the main spread of the bread to bring home for money. So they're without. They're in debt. If thou afflict them, uh oh, look at this one. Don't do it. But if you do it, in any wise, that's a broad. That's broad. And they cry all unto me. I will surely hear their cry. Now watch this. Watch 21, 22, and 23 how it goes together. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him. For ye were yet strangers in the land of Egypt. Ye shall not afflict any widow or father's child. If thou afflict them in any wise, they will cry, on, cry at all unto me. I will surely hear their cry. Isn't that what God was doing to them in Exodus? When they were crying out to him because of the rigor, because of how hard, how hard the bondage has been, they cried out to God, and God told Moses, I hear them. And their babies were getting killed. And maybe the widow's children are dying. So God has referenced that all the way back to when you guys were in Egypt. Now that you've gone through that, don't you do it. 
and my wrath. What's wrath? I'll tell you what wrath is. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God. Hell. Scripture with Scripture. My wrath shall wax hot. How hot can it get? Lake of fire. And I will kill you with the sword. War. And your wives shall be widows. And your children fatherless. You get your just, your just desserts. If thou lend money to any of my people, Jewish people. Then this is not about Gentiles. So don't go say, well, a bank can't, you know, do interest. Because, no, we're talking about Gentiles. I mean, excuse me. We're not talking about Gentiles. We're talking about Jewish people. My people, God said, that is poor by thee. So he needs money for help. Thou shalt not be to him as a usurer. Interest. I'll give you this money, but you're going to pay this amount of interest. God said, no. Now, later on in the law, God's going to tell, for the Gentiles, yeah, you can charge them whatever you want. Go ahead. But your fellow Jew? No. Hebrews person? No. Money to any of my people that is poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him as a usurer. Neither shalt thou lay upon him usury, no interest charges. If thou at all take thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, what are you going to give me for collateral? The only thing I got is the shirt on my back. See that one? My coat? My shoes? There are places, I think it was two or three places in Bible mentions about selling people for shoes. That's interesting. Thou shalt deliver it unto him by that the sun goeth down. Now that's kind of weird. All right, I'll take your coat. And before 6 p.m., here's your coat back. I don't know how that works. That's, that's just weird. Okay, here's my coat. And God said, you give it back to me before the sun sets. For this is his covering only. It is his raiment for his skin. It's protection, hide nakedness. He is so poor, the only thing he has is what he's giving you. And he needs it. It might get too cold tonight. He might be showing his nakedness. Wherein shall he sleep? And their garments were so fitted that they would match to what you roll them up. You fold them out. The clothes that they wore were so great because you could do multiple things of what you're doing. And it shall come to pass when he crieth unto me that I will hear. For I am gracious. So you're not to take advantage of a fellow Hebrew. You're to help him. Now, let's get with this one. Thou shalt not revile, scorn, or criticize the gods. All right. Nor curse the ruler of thy people. America has not got that one straight. Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits and the liquors, that's the juice. The firstborn of thy son shall thou give unto me. How's that for a tithing? God demands you in the law. Those first fruits you pick, they're mine. That firstborn son, that's my son. You have to redeem them, but that's mine. So the first harvest, you, under the law, must bring it to God. 
Likewise shalt thou do with thy oxen. Firstborn the oxen, that's God's. And with thy sheep, firstborn the sheep, the first you, that's God's. Seven days it shall be with his dam, the mother. On the eighth day thou shalt give it to me. One week with the mother, the eighth day, like a circumcise of a male child, the eighth day, you bring it to the temple. It's God's. Ye shall be holy men unto me. Neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beast in the field. Alright? You go out there, and your best cow has been eaten by wolves. And there's meat left over. You shall cast it to the dogs. Dogs were savages. Dogs and pigs, unclean animals, were garbage disposals. And they were garbage disposals even in New York City and in London and all that. They were run free, devouring garbage. But a Jew was not to take an animal that has been destroyed by other animals. No, throw it away. You can't do that. So we see already the first is dietary law. If it has been chewed by another animal, you're not to chew it yourself. 